mimic an actor of brilliant extemporary <laughs> performer, which you'll know if you've ever seen him in Whose Line Is It Anyway? So welcome, John Sessions. <laughs> Said, um, in fact, while, while Tanita was singing, the two boys here were saying the most difficult part of this show is that walk, that terrible yes. walk across the stage. Yeah. Trying not to look camp. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you just, you, you did that thing of walking past, because you're concentrating on getting to the settee, walk past the host. That's it. Well, that's a classic. You know? Yeah. It's, it's a very long way to walk, actually, and not feel stupid. Yeah. It's very difficult. Oh, we don't care about the feeling stupid. No. <laughs> I just think I look stupid, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Look, there, that's better. You, you've been, since we last talked, you've been playing that silly game on the television. Very silly, yes. Whose line is it anyway? Yeah. I mean, it is an extraordinary piece of television, and it's proved extraordinarily popular as well, considering it's... Or is it completely... No, it's completely made up, yes, and it shows sometimes. It's, uh, <laughs> but it's deeply, deeply unfunny. I think it shows quite well. Oh, well, it show, shows on <laughs> this programme as well. Yeah. So, I mean, give us a kind of an example. Give us an example, in case, in case anybody here, well, just a remote possibility. Just a possibility. Yeah. I don't know what he's talking about. Yeah. There was, um, there's a game we do where they say, right, take an everyday situation, and then you have to do it in the style of something. So let me take an everyday situation of, I don't know, um, a bloke chatting up a girl. Yeah. Okay? So I'll do it for a wee bit, and then you tell me to shut up, especially if there's a long silence, and then we do it in a style of something else. Right. And you tell me the style to do it, and or you Bill, or you... Yeah. Right. Right. Okay, so a bloke okay. chatting up a girl. So yes. darling, I'm nothing better than seeing a girl wrapped up like a bit of baker foil, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, I want you to do it like a uh, JR for me. What, like JR? Yes. Well, you can't understand where I'm saying. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. The thing is, not only have I got a two-dimensional personality, I've got a two-dimensional set as well behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a win. Man, let me down. I'm something else. What are we doing? Um, do Iggy, it, moment. Do it, do it. Um, um, Prince Charles. I, I think it's extraordinary that, I think it was Lawrence Van der Post said that <laughs> one of the most exciting things you can do to a woman is to sit there and quote some old-fashioned writer with a scent of parting and bore her stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Patronizing people. <laughs> I've got two basic voices. There's the lovely old aunt you are. Could she go to person? And then there's the hard faced old bitch that we know she really is. <laughs> um, I, I want John to do one thing for me. Right. I want you to imagine, John, that Harry Carpenter's climbing through the ropes in Las Vegas. Yes. <laughs> Bruno. Frank Bruno has just knocked out Mike Tyson. Yes. And he's interviewing Frank Bruno. I want you to be Frank Bruno. Well, the first thing I need is a drink, I think. <laughs> I'll, take... <laughs> I'll take a drink. Or maybe I'll put a drink. I'll put I'll put I'll pour some water into the glass. <laughs> That's all my round, isn't it? Now I'll pour some uh, let's say I'll pour some water into the glass. And and I remember the most exciting thing about the whole match was that during the whole thing, I was recalling chapter 83 of David Copperfield. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why, that's the way my brain works. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I look at an egg and I wonder whether it's the capital of Australia. And other times, the two sort of connected rods go together and I'm able to recite the Bible. <laughs> Very good. Very good. <laughs> When you finish, right, when you finish here tonight, you're doing a, a show that, that I'm really for, for about an hour on stage doing this. Yes, it's a pilot, um, which uh, an idea I took to Alan Yentob, who runs BBC Two, and Jeff Posner, the director who does Lenny Henry's show and Dawn and Jennifer's shows and everything. He was game for it. And instead of just doing a sort of whose line is it anyway type of thing, where it's uh, a case of, you know, do it for 10 seconds, you know, because that's the thing I find to be a bit difficult and frustrating, that you don't get a chance to build something. Well, I'm bloody well going to get a chance to build something tonight, because uh, <laughs> it's going to be a case of going solidly for an hour, and I'm just going to come out, and there's going to be a table of objects, and I'll say, pick two objects, then they've got to pick a, a place, and then the other side of the audience have to pick a type of person, and then I go. <laughs> I go and get another job. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there anybody you can't do? Oh, millions of people oh. I can't do. Christ, yeah. yeah. Who, who is the most difficult, you know, person you find really difficult to do? Um, Ralph Richardson. 
Oh, I would dearly love to do. Oh, I, I would oh, be wonderful. No, I, I do a really rammy Ralph Richardson and Anthony Hopkins, you know, Anthony Hopkins, yeah. who uh, yeah. is fantastic, really. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's an amazing person, isn't he? he does all sorts of voices and um, always uh, looking away before he uh, talks. Um, <laughs> sorry, darling, he does a great Ralph Richardson. Yes. And I've just been working with Robert Stevens. The loudest actor I've ever met in my life. <laughs> and uh, we've got earplugs out. Uh, Robert does the most fantastic Ralph Richardson. He gets that. I mean, you know him, Brian. You've worked with him. Oh, I know Robert Stevens yeah. well. Yeah. No, you've worked with Ralph Richardson. Yeah. Oh, Ralph Richardson. I, I, I don't know him. Well, I know him. Yes, I've worked with yeah? Ralph Richardson. You have, of course, yes. the, 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 what, the butler. Did. No, 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 Ralph, no. Way, Sorry. way, way behind. Uh, Sorry, wrong one. Thousands of years before the war. Really? I played his daughter. What was that in? Uh, <laughs> Sorry, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> J.B. Priestley's... Linda Tree. No, 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 no. no. It's Great time of the Conway. Basil, Basil D. directed it. Oh, Lord. I'll think about it. It's plenty of time. Yeah. For goodness no. sake, yeah. Anyway, um, well, it's I very difficult to do. But how do you set about doing somebody? I, mean, I don't know, Bill. You just, just, it's a natural instinctive thing, is it? Well, sometimes, like, you think you can do somebody. Like, mm. doing Terry. I mean, now, Terry's dead right, because he says a lot of people do him like the late Eamon Andrews. They just do that sort of paddy thing, you know? Yeah. But, I mean, you do sorts of eyebrow raising and stuff. And you work, he works the camera the way a matador works a bull, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 that there. <laughs> Titivating and tillitating. <laughs> Moving, the head. Moving the head about. <laughs> Come now. <laughs> the, thing about, the thing about your impersonations, I mean, we seem to yeah. just be talking about your impersonations a lot more to you than that, but the thing about it is you seem to get the physical characteristic. Is that where you start? I don't know. I mean, some, sometimes there's wee things you get, you know, like Edward Fox, the actor Edward Fox, who was the only man with a bicep in his face. Um, <laughs> he's got this amazing thing of sort of squeezing the words out. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. That is brilliant. Very good. You just sort of squeeze them out. In fact, it's very funny. He did a play in the West End a couple of years ago with Maggie Smith, and uh, he had to play a Russian. And he sort of thought, you could tell, because he doesn't like doing accents and things. I mean, you can't really imagine him on East Enders, you know. Hello, Edward. What are you doing down the East End? Hello, God blimey, Governor. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a fair cop. <laughs> hey, what are you doing in Rover's Return? Hey, by gum, my blimey. Good night, Rover's Hot northern people peculiar. <laughs> Smell like turnips. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this thing, he had to do this, this accent. And um, he had to do a Russian accent. And he had a line where he had to say, You've had so many lovers. And he went, You've had so many lovers. <laughs> he did that for about five or ten minutes. Then he just went back to old Edward. Oh, he made the gesture. Yeah, yeah. stopped all that Russian nonsense. <laughs> yeah. But did you start is it very young? I mean, the, the well, it's a classic. It's a classic old school thing. Yeah. You know, if you're a big, big guy like I don't know Robbie Coltrane or Stephen Fry, you can be funny as a bonus. Right. But because you're yeah. built like a beep beep, then <laughs> you know you can. You can lay people out anyway, yeah. but if you're a, a dwarf like me and several other people I know are comedians, then when people yeah. got you like that, you know, <laughs> the only thing you could do is make them laugh or <laughs> let them kick you to death, you know. So. All so, the schoolmasters. Doing all the school teachers all and the school all that, teachers. yeah. Yeah, yeah well, without going into the kind of comedy and all that, do you think that most comedy is inspired by fear? I remember Eric Morecambe said that to me a long yes. time ago. He said it's fear that drives us all. It's a well, defensive I've... mechanism, certainly, isn't yes. it? Yes. Oh, yes, indeed. When you're nervous, mm. I mean, often when I'm very nervous, <laughs> like now, you know, there's more of a compulsion to be very, very amusing. But then you get guys like Max Miller, you see, who would do, I think, is one of the greatest ever. I mean, I know it was never around when he was there, but I've seen the records. I've seen the records. <laughs> oh, I've seen the records, Harry. No, I've heard the records. <laughs> and um, it's incredible, you know, this amazing fast pattern, much more like yeah. sort of the American comedians who I, are my heroes. Yes, we hardly spoke to anyone, you know. He did he not? Oh. It was a very detached sort of... Very hard to A lot of the greats are like that. They're sort of removed from people, aren't they? Like, mm. uh, say, but when you Howard. go out to a party, for instance, people ask you to do it. Do you, do you enjoy that? I mean, is it something you, you love to do all the time? Uh, well, sometimes, yes. It's, yeah. it's great fun, you know, but it's dreadful to think, you know, God, he has rent a mouth, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's having a nice time, you know, and you yeah. suddenly, God, he's, off. he's away. But I, I don't know why it is, but I, I enjoy impersonations more than the, the actual thing, more often than not. Sorry about that, Trevor. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I don't know <laughs> what impersonation <laughs> is with them. Can you do yes. William Rose? No, surely not. I don't know, Val. I've thought about it for a long time. No, I can't really know. Yeah, well, <laughs> they, 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 Ryan Glover. <laughs> Excuse me, Brian. I am God. <laughs> so bugger off. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, John Fox. <laughs> well, thanks. Well, thanks.
thank you all for my guests. It's been the most entertaining evening for me, and I hope you. And there we go. That's the way of all flesh. Be of good.